I must be careful now. Locked. Need to tread carefully. These must be the people who bought the book from Thorstein. Be my eyes, Zunin. This area is off limits. Soon in, guide me. Another 
underground cavern. Wherever these people are, they're secretive. Get out of this ghastly grotto. A story? There was a woman called Nan who came by ship to Hornburg and heralded, demanding to meet King Sigvald, Styrbjorn's father. Nal was from Gautland. She was tall and rugged and strong, and everyone who walked near her said she smelled of men's blood. When her message was sent to our king, Nal was made to wait a full day. Yet she did not complain. She watched the waves and sang songs. Night came and went, and still Nal sat by the shore of the fjord, singing her songs. She skipped rocks with children and smiled. As the afternoon of the second day approached, King Sigvaldi's messenger reappeared. They spoke quietly together. At last, the messenger stood back and waved to some men nearby. Three men bearing three chests of silver approached quickly. They set the chests of silver in Nal's ship and stood back. Then Nal stepped forward, swinging a large, bloodied sack before her. Nal opened the sack and emptied it on the shore. Seven pairs of hands tumbled to the ground. Nal then mounted her ship and sailed away. <laughs>
It is a violation of the highest degree. This will be remedied soon enough, Abbot. You have my promise. The book! Have you found it? Its popularity is ever increasing. This is Owen, Abbot of Armagh. The book is for him. I remember. From the coronation. I pray you did not have to endure much to reclaim this. A small price to ensure the High King's patronage. What's this? Lord. You are chosen High King by God Almighty. These are pagans. I, I mean no disrespect. You have no say here. This is between two kings. I only mean to warn Flan of the possible implications. Nothing more. And I am well aware of them, Abbot. I have spoken past what is right. I will take my leave. Lord, please excuse this clumsy intrusion. No need. I am glad to see the book is back in good hands. He is colorful. I do not blame the abbot for raising alarm. History dictates he has every reason to. What is your report? I have dealt with the leader in the bark. He will have no more problems coming out of Dublin. Then we shall turn our eyes to the problem at hand. Ulster is using its power to sway Connacht. An allegiance that must be snuffed before it takes flame. For that, we need to gain support from the other kingdoms. Speak with Kira. She will guide you in this. I shall return to Dublin to gather men and resources for the march. I welcome them. When we are strong enough, we'll meet at Knock Free and devise a strategy. You were gone some time. What happened? The book was in the hands of a strange cult. They procured it from Thorstein. I was weak to spare him. My own son knew better. Chin up, Barith. We have come into favor with the High King. I will feel better the day Flan's trust in me is not shadowed by doubt. Back to Dublin I go. Talk to Kira. We must gain favor with the other kings, quickly. I am glad to see you.
I reckon Flan and Barith have found common ground, seeing as you're still here. They have. Ara, and how much of your charm seeped into that conversation? I merely showed the High King I'm a Norse you can trust. It is more than that. You've certainly left your mark here. Sure, I think Flan is fond of you. Is he the only one? <laughs> You're not shy, are you? Just perceptive. We need to curry favor with as many kingdoms as we can. Flan said you could help with that. Aye. The kings of Ireland have long sent their grievances to the High King's court, in hopes their pleas be heard. Their problems range from petty squabbles to larger issues. I've taken the liberty of sifting through them, choosing the ones that might elicit the best response. I see. The bigger the favor, the bigger the reward. There you have it. Keep an eye out for pigeon coops. That's where I'll leave any noteworthy tasks. Help solve their woes, and the kings will pay tribute with the men and supplies we need to invade Ulster. Zulin. What's all this?
I should be cautious around here. What's the problem? What's that about? Out you!
now to get out of here. Men. The fruits of your labors, Eivor. The kings you've helped have sent men and more as tribute. You have my thanks. Thank me later. A battle looms. <laughs> True enough. Your cousin awaits inside the tent of command. I'll soon follow to plan our next move. Look at me, part of Flan's war council. Not bad for a vikinger, eh? You have gained his trust? I wouldn't say that, no. He's a bit suspicious of me, in fact. But he needs my army, so he holds his nose. Of course he does. Viking smell. My king, we are ready to deliver Alec a weighty blow. But our enemies are now alerted, and will rally in greater numbers. Cashelor Castle divides Ulster and Connacht. Taking it would isolate each from each. Cashelor is a stepping stone to all the north. It is an imposing fortress atop a steep cliff. It must be ours. But for that very reason, Lord, it will cost us dearly to storm it. Loss of men is a price well paid. Victory will bring many more flocking to our cause. Take care, King. Your ambition may overleap your reason. What is your counsel, Eivor? Cunning over courage. A single spy slips in and breaks the gate locks. Then our soldiers flood in. It is worth the attempt. You seem to have a feel for this, Eivor. I select you as this single spy. Eivor? It's a good challenge. We have a scout near the castle. She may be able to help you. <laughs> 